flat drop. Worlds behind the poles. Is there more land behind the Arctic Circle? Is Antarctica surrounding us in a complete circle with a 200 foot high ice wall that keeps us within the Middle Earth? I'm calling from Thailand. I wanted to give you some um, important information. I sent it to you over six months ago by email. I never got a reply, so I thought I would phone. Yes, in 1928, important information, I sent it to you. Read it. Pause it. The South Circle is the largest of the five zones. Also, the nights are longer when the sun is moving near the, the South Circle. But when the sun moves near the, the North Center, the night is about eight hours in the North Temperate Zone. This is in the early 1900s. This is not put out there to trick you. This is not taught in your schools. This is alternative or reality, should I say. When the sun moves near the north center, the night is about eight hours in the north temperate zone, and the north center is lighted for six months. This is a proof that the earth is not like the south in shape, neither the south like the north. If the earth was round, as some people imagine, this is just your imagination. This is only your imagination of a ball because it's been put in your classroom called a globe. That image has been imprinted in the deepest part of your subconscious and you have to fight it out by researching and emptying your cup and understanding that this is the time that we are going to get the drop right now. If the earth was round as some people imagine, the shape of the North Pole and the South Pole would be exactly the same. That's by default. Then the North Pole and also the South Pole would have six months of darkness and six months of light by default. That's your model. You have to stick to it. You got a ball. Also, the sun takes more time to move around from east to west near the South Circle. Circle, 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 circle. Right, the South Circle is your Antarctica that surrounds you. It is a circle. All right, you are. This is the middle. You know, let's draw like America. All right, the Antarctica is this. It's an ice wall. It's a ice wall. Look at the UN flag. You will see the ice wall is the reef. Also, the sun takes more time to move around from east to west near the south circle. Take a journey around the south circle and another around the north center and you will find, see, they don't call this a north circle. They call it this a south circle and this the north center. That's just the center. The north pole, some say there's a mountain there, you know, that reaches to the heavens, you know, whatever. They don't let you fly over it. No commercial aircraft can fly over it, so you don't. They can't even see what's right here. They won't ever let you know what's at the center of everything. Where the North Star or Polaris is magnetically connected to our North Pole. And all the stars and constellations spin around on the access point of the North Pole that they will not let any commercial plane fly over. Nor will they let them near the South Circle because it's a circle. It is your... That's south. You want to go south, that's in all directions. <laughs> go south to the south circle. Alright? We got to get off their clock. Off their checkerboard. We have to get off of, of their understanding of east, west, north, south. We got everything from them. We have to unlearn everything. Okay? Take a journey around the south circle and around the north center... And you will find it much shorter distance around the north center, which proves that the north and the south are not the same shape as people claim. After you have studied the truth of my work, you will know I am right. 
If anyone desires more explanation, I will be pleased to give it. This person is just excited to drop this, man. This is John G. Abazai, 3 Malta Street, Boston, Massachusetts. And it's in Arabic as well. Matter of fact, it was originally in Arabic and it was translated to, to English. So this is not the white man tricking you. Dig on it. So Over six months ago by email, I never got a reply. So I thought I would phone. Yes, in 1928, Captain Sir George Hubert Wilkins, um, he found an exit to this uh, plane. Uh, he went over 5,000 miles from uh, what they call the end of uh, Antarctica, and he found uh, more lands there. So he, um, I read a book, I managed to get a second-hand book uh, 30 years ago called Worlds Beyond the Poles, and uh, there is a mention, this information is mentioned, and also that these planets that we see, or supposedly see, um, are actually um, beyond um, this land of ours. So what I'm saying is, is that um, the reason why they're destroying this planet is because they have a way out of here to save themselves. South this Circle. information not only was published Hold in up. this book, Hold but up. also themselves. Yes, this information... South Circle. As you can see, they got the Arabic over here. This is your South Pole. This is your Antarctica. Antarctica is an ice sheet. That is a wall of ice. It's the only continent that you have to climb up on it. You have to climb a 200 foot wall of ice. And once you are on top of it, damn, you can go on, some people say forever. Some people have a model of just going on an infinite plane. So, you know, when they say that this is not a ball and that all these um you know what i'm saying galaxies are far away are just being made up by nasa and all this kind of stuff then you, you think that makes you oh, okay that means that we're just shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and now nah, i'm saying they they don't show you all the land that's beyond here and some people have other land they're finding once you climb up on the ice sheet but they don't let anybody you know what i'm saying um explore that anymore you have to be have, to have, have, have some type of pass, and if you can get to Antarctica, you're only going to get to like the islands, and they'll have some type of tours around some little areas. But they're not going to let you take you and your peoples and your folks and start, you know, what I'm saying, doing your own thing. And some have said after a few hundred miles, you're going to find more land. So we look at okay, my planet, like this is Earth, but there are more Earths. Some say there's another sun way if you keep walking. You'll get into darkness and then you'll see another sun the further you go. So this is how we're expanding our conception of reality. And it's okay to ask questions. I don't have the proof of everything. I'm just getting somebody else's take on it. In 1919, that dropped this originally in Arabic. And no one's teaching it to you. So that might be the drop. not only was published in this book, but also it was um, published in the Dumbrova, uh, which is a Russian explorer magazine, 1928. Yeah, yeah and also there was a radio announcement um, confirmed by the press in uh, February 5, 1956. Um, uh, on January, 13 members of the United States Expedition accomplished a flight of 2,700 miles from the base at um, Makodo Sound, which is 400 miles west of the South Pole, and they penetrated a land the extent of 2,300 miles beyond the pole. Also, yeah, in this book I also sent you in this email, but I'll send it again. There is, um, it, I mean, it's a, a map to show you that the North and South Poles are not where we think they are. Um, in fact, I've always said that uh, what we know is the North Pole is the central pole. We'll back pole. it up because I think North I missed something. Um, I think we missed something important. Penetrated a land the extent of 2,300 miles beyond the pole. Also, what did she just say? Yeah, in this pole, and they penetrated a land the extent of 2,300 miles beyond the pole. Also, yeah, in this book, I also.
so they said they penetrated a land expanse 2,000 to 3,000 miles beyond the poles. So I want to get what you're saying. You're saying they found it or they penetrated that far. That's what I want to understand. Pole. And they penetrated the land extent of 2,300 miles okay. beyond the poles. Let's see. Let's go. Yeah, in this book I also sent you in this email, but I'll send it again. There is, um, it, I mean, it's a, a map to show you that the north and south poles are not where we think they are. Listen. Um, in fact, I've always said that uh, what we know is the north pole is the central pole. The north pole and the south pole are actually south of our plane, and they're the two exits. In the book, um, World Whoa. Beyond the Poles, you'll find that he mentions that there's land beyond uh, the north pole, but I they're the two exits, and they're both south from this plane. The North and the South Pole are both south from this plane. This, this, you know, we're always fighting over Africa or America. These people are, you, <laughs> they're talking about the land beyond the ice. And that south of this particular land we're calling Earth. We're calling a globe, we're calling a ball of water spinning, and all we can think and conceptualize is this little piece of earth with Africa and America and Australia, and that's all we know, that's all we know, that's all we know. They got us on a ball of water spinning with only that land saying, look, trust us, we'll, t we'll tell you about all the land, but you got the drop, and you got expeditions, and you're hearing it, and you're hearing witnesses. And this is something that you can recon. You ain't got to take nobody's word for anything. Nobody's telling you to do that. Clearly, I'm not trying to indoctrinate you to anything. I'm trying to say, what did she just say? Let's back it up. Excellent point. All these explorers, they say, I'm going to explore the North Pole. I'm going to explore the South Pole. But they always have to come back exactly the way they came. No one's ever went to on, 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 on sea or plane to the North Pole and came back on the other side of the ball. They tell you stuff like that. Oh, we circumnavigated. For all they did, let me show you how I'm about to circumnavigate the word perfect. I'm about to perfectly circ circumnavigate the word perfect. I'm circling it. I'm circumnavigating. So if you're looking down from a bird's eye view of land, and you say, okay, here's the ocean, and it's going around Africa and America and all this, I am about to circumnavigate all this land. I just went around the whole ball. With my finger. You're a bird looking down, circumnavigating the whole land. They never circumnavigated a ball and popped out on the other side of it. East, east to west or north to south. You know what I'm saying? Dig it up and research it. And get to the bottom of things. Alright. So, that same cat. Abizaid. I'm going to drop a link that you will love if you're into this type of thing. 
Second edition, The Enlightenment of the World by John G. Abizai. This book contains proofs that the earth is flat and stationary while the sun, moon, and stars are in constant motion, which is circling around you, which is circling around you, which is circling around the indigenous people. That's why I'm saying wake up, indigenous people, because you have the sun, moon, and stars in constant motion circling, bringing you their energy directly to you. And you're on a plane. And if this is the Arctic Circle and you keep going way past it, you're going to find more land. And you're going to find another Earth. And you might keep finding more. I don't know. That's that infinite plane, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Matt Boylan, uh, Jaronism, Mark Sargent, you know what I'm saying? You got cats dropping on that. <coughs> so this Abizai got, you know what I'm saying? And they got they drop from us, man. You know what I'm saying? This ain't new. The most I said I put you on. On a firm, fixed, and immovable earth. Firm, fixed, and immovable earth. Firm, fixed, and immovable earth. How do you get a spinning ball globe out of a firm, fixed, and immovable earth? You got to do some real word trickery to go into the scripture and see firm, fixed, and immovable and, how, and get a spinning ball out of that. Or just get a ball and say, okay, okay, fine. It's immovable, but it's still a ball. Well, how do you have a ball? Well, is the ball just not going to move now? Come on. Come on, man. So you got a ball. So, so you still got gravity holding a crushing millions of tons of water. But now you ain't even you ain't even spinning no more. Huh, dog? So check this out. I'll drop the link. Um, this cat, Brian Clark, uh, whose drop I just dropped. Shout out to Brian Clark. Check out his uh, flat drop. Um, but he actually re requested personally to get them to do the facsimile to put this up. And they actually... Uh, you know what I'm saying? He pulled some strings and he got it done, man. You know, what, what can I say? So you can get this. Uh, they want to get the third edition because they got a lot of drop in that. But the second edition is pretty clean. And you can check it out on your own. Enlightenment of the world. He's going to break down some real simple uh, proofs of your flat and stationary plane. Uh, you can read the preface to the second edition. This book has common words and phrases so that everyone may understand. I wrote it first in Arabic, then translated it to English because nearly all Americans can read and write their own language. My reason for printing this book is not to make money or fame, but because I wish to show people who differ from my views where their mistakes lie. Everything in this book is true. What I think on the subject is not guesswork. You will find... I'll try to hold it still, my bad. You will find in it... A good foundation for beliefs, good ideas, and absolute proofs. You do not need to accept it merely on faith, but you may see with your own eyes and feel with your own bodies. Thus, you may know it is the truth. As long as you have eyes to see and a body to feel and brains to think, use them, and you will know the facts. <laughs> Christians believe the Bible. In this book of holy writings, or right. Uh, are proofs given by the prophets that the world is flat and stationary. So, of course, he says Christians, but, you know, we know who the indigenous people are, that they are not Christians, that they keep the commandments, that they had the commandments here in stone, you know what I'm saying? So we're getting to understanding. So he's talking about, really, Hebrews, all right? And in that, you know what I'm saying, you're talking about the Aztecs and you're talking about our people here. So read it from that perspective, believe the Bible, and in this holy book, holy right, are proofs given by your prophets that your world is flat and stationary. And that the sun, moon, and stars are always in motion. Around who? The people of the book. This is his, uh, you know what I'm saying? This is what he's putting forth. There are many, however, who do not accept the truths of the Bible. And for this reason, I give other proofs. So he's like, I'll go outside of that. I'll go outside of that. There are some, there are some things that need witnesses, but other truths are their own witnesses. They they bear the proof in themselves. I mean, you you really get to kind of get into the psychology of the facts of the people that come with these proofs and facts. But this cat is pretty cold from what I'm seeing right here. I mean, you know, he's saying I'm bringing you the real deal. 
And he starts off, and you see how he does the chapters, about water, about the land, about the sun, moon, and stars. He keeps it real simple. It's a short, it's like 20-page book, like a 25 or 32-page book. He gets right into it. All right. You know that there is more water on the earth than dry land. Here's the first proof. The water proves that the earth is flat, level, and stationary. Water is liquid. It runs always down and seeks its level and never runs up unless by power. And the water of the ocean is every way pretty near joined together on the earth. And they call it liquid. It is not, it will not stay on a round earth. Take a glass, pour, take a glass of water and pour it on a round ball. And if the water stays on, then the earth must be round. But if the water falls off, <laughs> Then the earth must be flat. So, you know, he, he's, 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 he's going to start real basic. You're on a ball, remember. It's a ball, and at the center is, is solid, right? They say it's a core. Here's the core. And then you got the core and gravity somehow around the core. And you got the water on top of that, the core. Staying on the core without running off, right? Into a vacuum of space. Remember, there's no air in space. There's a vacuum, right? What happens in a vacuum? According to them, water still stays on the ball. Even if you spin it in a vacuum at a thousand miles per hour, this gravity force that they never proved, they call it a theory. A theory, not a law, but a theory of gravity. Based on their theory, there's some force that just makes it happen. And none of them can prove it. None of them ever, ever have proved it. Einstein never proved it. No one cares to prove it. And they still think they can have their ball. And I'm saying, no, we're taking your ball away. All right, so this is the proof. Take a pan and fill it with water and see if it is higher in the center than all the sides. If it is true, then the water of the ocean might be round. But if the water in the pan is level and flat, or flat and level, then the water of the oceans must all also be flat and level. The water of the ocean is level and can be nothing else because it is liquid, which proves that the land is flat and not round. The land is not exactly flat and level, for there are mountains and valleys, okay? So when we say flat earth, I don't even really say that. I say melanated true earth plain. Melanated true earth plain because flat gives you, you know, an impossible thing to imagine. And that's what they do. They come out and they say, here's the truth, flat earth. And they, and they do a, a psychological sorcery trigger to make you mad as soon as you hear it. So don't say that. You know, it's not flat. You know what I'm saying? It's mountainous. It's beautiful. It's bumpy, it has, it has high and lows, right? But we're just saying, in comparison to a round ball, there you go. All right, so we're on a melanated true earth plane. All right, but it makes no difference, for if the mountains were in the valleys, it would leave the land flat and level and higher than the water. I have been thinking of the question for a long time. At last... I have found out for myself from the water and the sunbeams, the sun's rising, the sunlight, etc., that the earth cannot be round and in motion, as books and teachers have taught. The teachers offer proofs to show that the earth is round, but the proofs they offer amount to nothing. When the children go to school, the teacher tells them the world is round, and of course they believe it, and they do not ask how it is round. They are young, and they know very little. When they grow up, they still believe the earth is round and in motion. And so in turn, they teach this to others. The water is flat, which proves that the earth is flat and stationary. Yo, that's just page one. You got chapters to look into for that. So water's flat. You never seen water curve into a ball of water. <laughs> You never see no experimentation of a ball. Even with sound frequencies, I would love to see that experiment of a of a of what sound turning water into a perfect ball with a mass in it. You still got to put the mass in it, not just the water, but it's going over a mass which they're calling the Earth's core. Water's over it, and then put that in a vacuum of space. Put it in a vacuum, right, and spin that puppy at a thousand miles per hour. And if you can show anybody that, cool. Or let's make it real simple. 
all NASA or any space program has to do is attach a camera to the bottom of one of these billion dollar satellites and just show us show us a live feed of a round earth spinning at a thousand miles per hour how easy is that what well, they can't get a camera that, that 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 can see the earth but they can go way hell to mars oh we just got a satellite that reached pluto that means they could have launched a satellite to reach a proper distance to see the entire earth earth ain't that big right compared to everything else out there so your camera lens can go far enough to, to show us a spinning ball <clears throat> but if you can't show us one image at all if i do a google search of earth and this is what i get earth enter oops they did a little they did some jive on me earth man enter all right, Earth. This is what you get. You don't get a pic. This is pic. Is this real? Hold on. Let me go to images. Images. Is this real? Do you know a painting when you see it? Do you know composites and CGI and graphics when you see them? Why are all the pictures on Google of Earth fake? If there is one real picture, wouldn't that be the very damn first picture? They've already proved, man, the one that they show in the Apollo missions, the first one, the, the apparent first one. That the, you know what I'm saying? They keep coming out with official ones. Like, the ones you're seeing, hey, they are saying are official, okay? This joint right here, let me click on it, is an official NASA joint that they put out and say, look, this is exactly where you live. This is your Earth. We're going to give it to you. And that's the thing. That's what we really got to understand. They're not giving us anything near real or correct or exact. They're giving you this. So how are you mad at me or anybody else for questioning this? And saying if it looks like that, if South America is really bending around a ball, or is South America flat, stationary? Okay? Huh? Does it bend up? I. It, if you're standing on top of the ball, all right, so so you're on this landmass and I'm over here, right? And I'm looking up at this water. <laughs> and I'm looking up at you at the top of your ball. What would be my uh, horizon? Will I see water, you know what I'm saying, going down on the horizon? Or should I see it going up on the horizon to get to you on the top of your ball? Now, I understand why you on top of your ball might see the horizon going down if you were, you know, but even this angle to go, he still has to, this is still going up and around. So, honestly, I got it backwards. If I'm up here, here's the slope, so I should be, yeah, seeing the water going down here, but on this way, looking up, you can't have it both ways. Everybody's horizon can't be the same. Everybody can't see ships, sh shouldn't see ships going down on the horizon. Certain people should see ships going up because depending on which part of the ball you're on, one is going up and one is going down. Depending on two different points, one will be going up, arching up. You're on a ball. You can't get away from that. You can't run from that. You say you're on a ball with 25,000 miles of comfort. So then there's formulas that say every mile should have this much curvature. Every mile should have about eight inches at least of a drop of curvature. So then you can calculate. If I'm going on a train to New York City, from California to New York, how much curvature is this? And when you calculate it, it's hundreds of miles of curvature that they will have to be laying train tracks, curving the train tracks for 3,000 miles. But these train tracks themselves are curving hundreds. Hundreds or miles, you know what I'm saying, whatever it is, it's miles and miles and miles, whatever the calculation is. It's over a mile. Just imagine over a mile of of engineered curvature on a bridge, even the bridges in China, a thousand mile long bridges. You're saying they're curving those bridges over your ball? And again, if I'm looking down or you looking up at me, 
wherever you're on the ball, you should not always have the horizon with the ships going down. You can't always, everybody on the ball is not going to have the same vantage point. Some people will have, if, if their waters were this way, they would see the waters now going up. If they were on this way, their horizon would be going down. Get it? If the sun, if I look up and I see the sun right here, and I see the moon, you know, you see the sun and the moon in the sky at the same time. So what's going on on the other side of the ball? Is it just in complete darkness? There's no moon over there? The moon I see right here is the same moon on the other side of the ball? You're saying the people that are standing up right here on this side of the ball are upside down? And if I took a plane and I flew, 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 at some point this plane got to flip upside down? Right? Doesn't a plane, it starts here, then at the other side of the ball, it's upside down? So it's just upside down now. If you and I are on top of this ball, we start drilling down. We say, we're going to get to the other side of the ball. We're going to prove it's a ball. You know, just, just go with me. We're, we're digging down, digging down, digging down, digging down to get to this other side of the ball. But when we get here, are we not coming up out the ground? So at what point did we stop digging down to, from the top of the ball and start digging up to get out the ball? Well, we had some type of gravitational shift in the middle that said it's time to dig up because we have to come up out the ground. We have to come up out the ground. You're always, you, you'll always be coming up out the ground. If you start from one part of the ball digging down, and you got to start digging up at some point. Come on, man. They're playing with your minds. They want you here when this is really a flat or, you know, more flat surface with an Antarctic circle that would be here. And all this is ice and then possibly more land here and more land out here. And it could be. So once you cross this ice, so this is all ice. And here's another earth. So once you cross this ice, you know, the circle of ice here, you get up 200 feet. They allow you to go thousands of miles and you see more land. That means you got to go back down 200 feet at least to get back to those waters to see what land this is. And you'll see videos when you look them up from Admiral Byrd interviews uh, in the 1940s where he said, there's land over here bigger than North America and all that combined with fresh resources and everything. So where do you think they go when they launch their rockets and their, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, you know, SpaceX rockets? And they always, they never go straight up. They always seem to curve. And then pretty much when you see them launched from planes, they actually level out and they just fly them across the ice into more land. That's their Mars. That's their Venus. More land. These are more Earths. Africa, America, all that kind of stuff. That's just one little pocket. Now we're expanding it. You know what I'm saying? Or at least we don't want to get into understanding that the recordation of there being more land. You think the Mosai just got this part? Okay. Well, here we go. Let's be here, but let's stop spinning. And once we stop spinning, we can vibrate together as a family. Flat drop, love y'all, stay up, suit up, choose up, king drop, we out.